So, well, it's morning time. I'm headed out to work. See what I can get into today. It's a nice day. Sunny. Summertime's coming back around. 77 degrees right now. Better be ready because when it gets here, it's here. Now, given the reality that, you know, we got the blower motor also that shut off on this thing earlier, and I don't know why. Maybe it would have shut off if I wouldn't have had the doors off. I don't know. But it came back on. We've got the refrigerant leaks, the evaporator. We've got the big one in the evaporator, but we also got the micro leaks. The micro leaks are going to add up, and they're just going to get worse. And we got a compressor. I think the best thing they need to do is replace the unit. How y'all doing? Hello. I work on your AC, so it's letting it's you guys know. It's hot. Save us something. Yeah. Uh, it's 72. Not doing pretty good? It's just, yeah, there's it's a humid. Way. You feel it's the humid. Yeah. yeah, it's just humid. And it's so hot. So now look here. We've got one expansion valve is sweating and cold. The other one is not. That means this is two circuits here. One circuit's not working at all. One compressor probably not running. The other one not working very well because it's not uh eh, it's not even cold over here this is barely cold dude it's so old it's got no uh no damn tag the tags all faded away can't even tell well anything on it sometimes you oh i can barely see the the model number and the serial number oh well maybe i can see uh i don't know good luck trying to find out anything off of that Fortunately, I can see a little bit, kind of a little bit there. And now, after looking very closely for a little while, I don't know if the camera can see it. I can't really tell because it's kind of bright out here, but this thing takes 11.5 pounds in circuit one and 7.4 pounds in circuit two. So I want to see what the running pressure is. We'll take this panel off. So here when I open her up, I notice I got one compressor running, but both contactors are energized. You see? Unplugged. Now, you gotta pay attention here because if you take this panel off, your head pressure starts to go up. So you wanna keep it moving air a little bit, you know, through the coils and not through the, through the inside. Something you could do is, you know, if you've got long enough hoses, you could pop out that and run your hoses through that. That way you can put the door back on. So right now, I'm just gonna connect to the compressor that's running. That's gonna be this one for liquid. And this one for suction. See, you shouldn't be able to just twist it off like that. They should be tightened, tighter than that. Let's see, we're running at 467 with the door off. When I put the door on and lock it off halfway, we'll see what it gets back down to. So my suction pressure was only up at 125 a minute ago because my liquid pressure was so high because the cover was off. Alright, so when I was recording these measurements, I had my liquid line temperature clamp connected on the downstream side of the dryer. And that's why I was getting this reading. So as I'm looking over this, I was watching it, I was watching my sub cool closely, but at the, at the moment I didn't realize where I had the clamp connected. So we're only reading this high subcool because we have a lower temperature on the liquid line at 96 so pay attention to where you connect so we got expansion valve on this device I mean on this unit I think I would say it might be a little low but it, it's it's if it is it's not very low it's not that low 
we've got a lot of things going on here. Okay. We've got warm air entering the evaporator, which should be theoretically having this pressure higher. We're running a, a 40 degree superheat and a 12 degree subcool. 75 degrees return. All right, so after it's stabilized, we're running 363 over 108. And we've got 70 degrees supply. So a five degree temperature drop with one circuit, that's not enough. I usually would see one circuit doing more like 10 or 12. I don't like these numbers based on what we have. I think we've got a problem with the metering device. So me being under the impression that I was that we had a nine degree subcool and a 40 degree superheat, I did think that there was an issue with the metering device. And that probably could have possibly been true if I was actually reading a nine degree subcool. So my thought process had me to go into the sensing bulb of the metering device, the circuit that was running, and trying to warm it up to see if I could get the expansion valve to react to that temperature change. So here you see me trying to trace out which copper pipe it is. And I swear, right as I'm doing all that, tracing out and figuring out which one it's gonna go to, my fan shuts off out of nowhere. And my freaking fan stopped or this thing slowed down why the hell did this thing slow down my freaking blower stopped running why did the blower stop running hmm This is strange. Strange. Maybe. I tested my fuses and they're, they're good, so I'm putting them back now. They have continuity between all three of them, or across all three of them. Okay, so what they've done, these guys at Train have They've brought power in over here. We've got fusible links that interrupt and then the power goes through here, through this uh, current sensor right there, into this plug here, and then out to the motor. And then the motor also receives uh, something from here, signal for speed control, ECM stuffs. Yeah, that kind of stuff. It's back over here to this control board that operates one way or another that I'm not really sure about. And what Train has done is they've come over here to the bottom of this contactor and, and jumped off of these terminals. That's their terminal block that they're doing right there. And I know it was these guys at Train that did that because that's what the schematic shows. The schematic shows uh, IDM power coming into CC1, the bottom of CC1. Now, I was gonna pull that sensing bulb on that running circuit, I was gonna pull it off. And I was gonna see if I could make the, the metering device respond. Oh, this compressor's done. Oh no, this compressor's done. This compressor said, hasta la bye bye. For comparison of a running compressor, 5.0, 5.0, and Point one. 
So three phase compressors will have identical resistance across the windings. Unlike single phase compressors will have different resistance values across the three windings. So we need a compressor. So I don't know why my stupid fan shut off when I was when I had the, the panel off. I guess it's possible that that thing shut it off because it knew the door was off, but I don't I doubt it. See what happens, man. We'll turn it back on and we'll see what happens, man. This thing will freaking come back on. Hey, hey, it did. Here's a little more of an accurate refrigerant pressure reading because I was taking my temperature downstream of the filter dryer. And so I take that back, what I said a little bit ago about it not being low on refrigerant. It's, it's low on refrigerant. We have a big difference between this temperature with a 105 being where it's at. We have a big difference between right there and over there in the dryer because it's not a full column of liquid. It is a, it is a mixture of liquid and vapor that is boiling off. So it cools down faster than, a li than liquid would if it was just liquid in the line you know, by itself. Now then, in case you didn't know, you want to shut your system down while you leak search. Yeah, this drain has a, I mean, this unit has a plug to drain. And look, check it out, I already see. I already see, you see the, the, the water balling up like that? It means there's a leak around there. Let's see if I can use my bubbles and not even need the electronic. Mm, probably not gonna get that lucky. Not today. These things are really freaking difficult to get to, you know that? Ah, you can take this this, this cover off right there. Right there, right there. Notice the oil buildup right here on the outside. And you just got four screws, five maybe, that hold that in. There we go. Now that's much better, don't you think? I'm gonna let that marinate for a minute. Man, my vision is deteriorating, y'all. I used to be able to see this stuff like really good. Now, now I gotta use my freaking camera and my phone to be able to see anything. So even if I'm not recording video, I use my camera so that I can zoom in and, and, and focus and spot these tiny little leaks. It's ridiculous. Ow, oh, freaking uh, spiders. I hate spiders. I hate them. My eyes just can't do this no more, man. That is so messed up. I don't feel old. Oh man, look. Oh, oh. A bubble on the header. There it is, there it is, there it is. Bubble on the header. That's a leak. It's a leak. I thought it was gonna be on that stupid header but you know what even if it is on the header man this coil is not far behind it with rust and corrosion bet you it's got leaks on it too man but that's the major one right there on the header I don't think that it is a valuable or, or well thought out option or idea to repair the leak on here and say okay it's good now I don't think it is so this is my circuit two. Okay, circuit two. It's gonna be the smaller one, which is the one that was uh, the one that was working. Yeah. So my dead compressor, circuit one, the big one. I think. Yep. I mean, that one could have anything in it. That one could have uh, acid burnout in it. That one could be flat. It could be something. Anything. We 
can't really know for sure exactly if the system on circuit one is low or if it's not low. If you connect to it and it has the same kind of standing pressure as it would if it was full, as long as there's liquid in it that's boiling off, then you're, you're theoretically going to have the same kind of standing pressure, which is matching that of ambient or indoor air temperature. So without a running compressor, like we don't know for sure, do you know? You know what these are, ladies and gentlemen? These are micro leaks. Leaks that are really small and for the most part don't affect the overall charge of the system on their own. But you know, you get, you get so many of them that it adds up. And you know, you, you spray them like that. You spray them and you make the bubbles go away, but they come back come back every time so then what are you to do with that replace it that would be what it needs So, you know, like I said, with these micro leaks, um, you, 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 you clear them out and they start to reappear. But our main focus is that one right there on the header that I showed you a little bit ago. Probably need to, yeah, got to recover what's in there. Got to fix it. Get it nice and hot. Put a bunch of solder on it. And um, then charge it back up with the... Uh, 7.4 pounds that I said it holds and that's it for that circuit then we have another circuit that has a compressor failure that I'll need to see if it's acidic or see uh, you know what all it's gonna need I need a dryer it's gonna need I'll check the pressure on it to see obviously if it's holding a good standing pressure we won't know how much of that's liquid or not and then I could leak search it again after after I make the repair, but it's gonna pick up on those micro leaks, you know? So you gotta watch out. They should just replace it because it's old. Anyways, the repairs, that's another video. I wanna I don't wanna make my videos too long because I want y'all to watch them. So like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I appreciate you watching. Thanks for the support. Y'all have a great day and be careful.